Pun enters a room and kills 10 people. Pun in, 10 dead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2015 action war film called Battle for Sevastopol. The movie opens in 1937. We see Ludmila Pavlichenka, a young student who has just passed the entrance exams for Kiev State University. To celebrate, she goes to a shooting range with her friends, including a female classmate named Masha. In a twist of events, her almost perfect shooting results at the range eventually result in the Red Army contacting her to enter a sharpshooting program. Eventually, she joins them, but her father also happens to be an army officer, and he did not want her daughter to conduct any sort of business with the army, because he had spent his entire life in the army and knows the way around. But Ludmila succeeds in convincing him. At the army, she crosses paths with a Jewish doctor named Boris. They both fall in love with each other at first sight and spend time together and eventually they plan to marry each other. One evening, they both attend a movie theater and during the show, the news reaches the theater that Russia is under attack because the Germans have invaded them, which meant that World War II had begun. Boris attempts to court her, but she rejects him because she knows she has to take part in the action in saving her country, given that she is already in the army. She leaves him to fight on the Eastern Front, following the German invasion, and trains harder with the army to prepare for battle. At the Eastern Front battlefield, her commanding officer tells her that since she is a good sniper, then she will have to aim and kill the German army's captain, which will indefinitely result in Germany being very discouraged. But before they could attack the enemy, the Germans invade from the sky and start firing at Ludmila and her fellow soldiers. She gets very frightened by the Germans' offense, because she had never seen an attack like this before. But she does not lose faith and takes cover. Despite a lot of her fellow soldiers killed, she still musters the courage to pick up her gun and starts aiming at the Nazis, and succeeds in killing dozens of them. After developing a taste for killing in the battlefield, Ludmilla now kills more Nazis with confidence, and she aims at the Nazis' captain and excels in killing him. After witnessing the death of their captain, the German bastards lose their morale. And thanks to Ludmila's outstanding efforts, her battalion wins the battle. The next day, Ludmila is rewarded for her bravery, and the general awards her a sniper rifle. After that, she runs into her old classmate Masha, who has also been drafted in the army, now a nurse engaged to a young pilot. Ludmila gets a sense of relief now, because she is not alone now in the army, and she has a friend who accompany her. Eventually, Ludmila is partnered with a grizzled veteran sniper named Captain Makarov, with whom she falls in love. He understands her intentions and fondness, but does not return her affections, however, and explains that he lost his family when the Germans invaded. Later that night, Masha and her fiancé invite Ludmila to join them for dinner. At the dinner, alongside Ludmila, Masha also invites a male soldier friend of theirs. After dinner, when Masha and her fiancé leave, their friend starts flirting with Ludmila, and when she resists, he starts harassing her. And coincidentally, Captain Makarov enters their tent and witnesses everything. But instead of acting like a damsel in distress, Ludmila punches the officer in front of Captain Makarov and leaves. Makarov follows her and stops her. Before he could manage to buoy up Ludmila, she kisses him. The captain gets awkward, but leaves without saying anything, because deep down, a part of him also likes her. After a while, we see Ludmila and Makarov at a city Odessa, where they are preparing for a battle alongside their army. Once again, the Germans attack on the battlefield all of a sudden. They start bombarding them, and Ludmila gets badly injured, and Makarov drags her to safety to a local hospital, where Barris has volunteered as a military doctor. Boris was the doctor who wanted to marry her, but now, Ludmila had surrendered her heart for Makarov. Now it was getting very hard for the doctors to look after Ludmila and the soldiers who were injured alongside her, because the doctors did not have enough medical equipment for everyone. So, the soldiers get shipped to another hospital at a different location. While getting transported through sea, Ludmila's ships get attacked by the German air forces again, and tons of innocent lives get wasted, but luckily, Ludmila manages to survive without getting injured. After that, when she recovers from her injuries, she turns to her senior majors and asks them if she could rejoin the battlefield. 
In truth, she wanted to protect her nation and also wanted to reunite with her captain, Makarov. Her superiors go through her medical report and straight up reject her for entering the field back again. They tell her that she is not medically fit and they cannot allow her to rejoin the force. Ludmila takes her medical report and goes to the hospital to meet Boris. She insists him to sign on her medical papers that she is medically fit to re-enter the field for battle. At first, he disagrees to sign the papers, but Ludmila manages to get Boris to sign her papers so that she can return to the front lines. And now, once again, Ludmila reaches the site where Captain Makarov was in her sight. But forlornly, she finds out that Makarov has died in battle, and the Soviets are retreating to Sevastopol. She gets her heart broken once again, but she still does not lose hope, due to her patriotism and her personal moral perception, and also for the fact that there is an ongoing war in her country. She now gets stationed in Sevastopol. Once again, back on the front, Ludmila is paired again, now with a male sniper named Leonid. She begins to wound enemy soldiers to watch them suffer, to her new partner's horror. Despite a rough start to the relationship, the two eventually develop a close romance, and have killed a lot of Nazis together at this point. They spend at least months together, and both were secretly in love with each other, but after her past intimate and heartbreaking relationships, Ludmila gets scared to express her keenness. Christmas arrived, and all the soldiers were celebrating alongside her. During the party, one soldier gets in a fight with she. She, no doubt, throws some punches to the loser's face, but her new partner, Leonid, intervenes and starts beating the other dude. He now ends the awkward silences between him and Ludmila and states the elephant in the room. He tells her that he has been in love with her and Ludmila kicks her fear in the nuts and opens up to him saying she also has been in love with him. She knew she had to tell Leonid about her feelings because she did not have more capacity to endure sadness or torment anymore. Things were starting to look bright for Ludmila, and her relationship with Leonid brought back happiness and cheerfulness in her life. Masha, now a nurse on the front line, invites them to her wedding, but then reveals the death of her fiancé. This development leads Ludmila to tell Leonid privately that she wants a son. Leonid does not respond to her, and she understands that this is the age of wars, and they have no time or place to have a happy, healthy family or have a child to raise. Even if they do, life will only bring chaos to the front door because the scale of the war was not ordinary. She completely loses hope and is now left with no other option but to accept her fate that she can't have a peaceful future. While on patrol in a field, Leonid steps on a mine that triggers a flare, signaling artillery fire onto the pair's position. Leonid figures out that a mine is going to explode in Ludmilla's direction. He runs towards her and jumps on the mine that was about to explode right in her face. He manages to save her, but gets brutally injured in the process. Ludmila picks him up on her shoulders and runs to the nearest medical building in the camp. Before she reaches the hospital, she faints and drops Leonid. She again wakes up in a field hospital, where Boris tells her Leonid died in the ambush. Now she truly loses her hope for having a relationship, because life just did not want to show mercy to her. She decides that now she wants no part of the army or wars back in her life, because it has brought nothing in her life but despair. Though wounded and exhausted, she is ordered to kill a top enemy sniper for Soviet propaganda. She tells the Russian officers that she does not want to take part in any sort of wars, but the officer convinces her to help them. When he tells her that this is a now or never situation for the nation, and they contacted her specially because the Germans fear Ludmila. The duel lasts for an entire day. Tired of waiting, Ludmila steps out of cover, exposing herself completely. She is shot, but manages to pinpoint the enemy sniper's location and kill him. As Sevastopol is being evacuated under siege, Boris carries a wounded and traumatized Ludmila to a submarine that is evacuating the city. While panicked, civilians attempt to board, Ludmila realizes that Barris gave her his own papers to leave the city. A voiceover reveals that Barris, Masha, and countless civilians and soldiers died defending the city from the Germans. Ludmilla's military record makes her a vital propaganda tool for the Soviets, who parade her around the world to collect funds for the fight against fascism. Encouraged by a meeting with the American First Lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, 
Ludmila attempts to embrace her femininity by wearing a dress during a speech in New York. Though the Soviet propaganda minister on tour with her forces her to change back into a Red Army uniform, she makes a vital impression on the largely male crowd, asking, Don't you think, gentlemen, that you have been hiding behind my back for too long? After the success of Ludmila's speech, she is approached by American folk singer Woody Guthrie, who eventually writes a song based on her exploits. Roosevelt later visits Ludmila after the war in Moscow during a 1957 trip. The two attend the opera together with Ludmila's son, who is inferred to be Leonid's. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.